with some NBA players having weird rituals that help them succeed. Some others use weird rituals as a way of communicating to their family through the TV. Steve Nash. Taking the NBA record of the greatest free throw shooter of all time, whatever ritual Steve Nash did clearly worked. Before retiring at 41 years old, Nash left the league with a career free throw percentage of 90%. Aside from the obvious practice Nash put into his free throw game, he, like many others, instilled a ritual to keep up with his consistency. Nash would often shoot the ball without it in his hands a few times before licking his fingers to comb his hair back. As mentioned, this tended to work out uh, nine times out of 10. Now, it didn't come without its disadvantages. If Nash had anyway been thrown off mentally from his shot due to some distraction, that's generally when he missed. Nash talked about the art of the free throw saying, I try to take all the extra motions out of it in one smooth fluid motion. When I was younger, I would shoot a lot of them. When I got older, it was just a lot of refining. Sometimes I would do 10 before practice, 10 after practice. If you've done all your homework and you have the right technique, it becomes an ability to believe and to cut out all the distractions and put yourself back in the practice court in the heart of a big moment. Before the referee gave me the ball, I would take two, if I could, practice shots without the ball. I think sports psychologists say now that even better than visualization is actual physical recreation even without the ball. Nick Van Exel. In a way to up the ante, Nick Van Exel often backed up a foot or two from the line before shooting. The move appeared to most to be somehow overconfident, but as it turns out, it has actually been a method his coach had reinforced. Nick talked about first trying to shoot from 17 feet, saying, I'm more of a three-point shooter than a mid-range jump shooter. When I played for Denver, I would always hit the back of the rim when I missed. It just felt more comfortable for me when I moved a few steps back from the line. So, I just stayed back, and I've been shooting that way ever since. I just tried it one day in practice, and it seemed to go well, so I told the coaches I was going to try it in the game. It went pretty well that game, and it just kind of continued from there. While it's certainly true repetition and a strong mentality is key for shooting from any distance, it's especially important for free throw shots. With this in mind, it's no wonder Nick continued the shot after first implementing it into his game. Ironically, shooting from the line suddenly would have likely lowered his percentage. Bottom line was, Nick was making his shots for the majority of his time in the NBA, at just above or below 80%, which is a whole lot better than what some players can do from 15 feet at the line. Don Nelson. It's ironic that Don Nelson found himself in a position of coaching where he helped players work on free throw techniques, while he in fact had none during his playing time. For as great of a coach Nelson went on to become, as a free throw shooter, he was horrible. That's a reference to easily one of the ugliest free throw shots a 6'6 guy should ever have. And while it's technically not a ritual, ignoring it would be straight up sinful. While lined up at the free throw line, Nelson often twirled the ball in his hand, one time before leaning towards the hoop on his right leg while his left launched out in the air. Using his right hand, Nelson launched the ball with a pump from his elbow out to his hands. Weird. <laughs> You gotta give him credit for his off-balance of a shot it was, he tended to make them fairly consistently. Alonzo Mourning Better known to the league as a lockdown defender, at 6'10", Alonzo Mourning hadn't been the greatest free throw shooter. Prior to shooting his shot, Mourning can be seen kissing his wrist before raising it to his forehead. Mourning would later go on to admit the ritual had been done as a way to pay tribute to his family. Needless to say, leading a career where he badly cracked 70% from the line tells us the move likely did little to no help. Jerry Stackhouse. While many players tend to carry some sort of low-key ritual prior to taking their shots, Jerry Stackhouse let everyone know about his, but only because it was so obvious. Prior to shooting his shots, Jerry would crouch all the way down to a level that just seems downright uncomfortable before shooting it. With a career free throw percentage of 82%, it may not have been as ridiculous as it looks. The technique came from not a coach, not a sports psychologist, nor a player, but his own mother. Back when Jerry had been shooting 70% from the line, his crouch technique had only been used when he cared to remember. Every time he'd miss a free throw shot, he'd often hear a reminder from his mother, who sometimes attend his game, saying, you didn't bend your knees. The reminder had been enough for Stackhouse to permanently add it to his game. Turkish player Hito Turkoglu talked about Stackhouse's ritual, saying, I still haven't figured out how Jerry Stackhouse shoots his free throws. He bends so low with both legs, and watching him makes my legs hurt. Rick Barry No free throw list of any kind would be right without the mention of Rick Barry. 
Before there had been Steve Nash to boast crazy free throw percentages in the 90s, there had been Rick Barry who finished with a career free throw percentage of 89%. Having played in the 60s, Barry had come into the league during a time where the books on free throw etiquette had not existed. Prior to shooting, Barry dribbled the ball three times before placing the ball between his legs for an under the leg toss into the basket. It was clearly effective. In fact, his former free throw had been the only style used for free throws in the 30s. That had been until players began adopting the more traditional free throw shot we see today sometime after. To give you an idea on how much of a stud Barry had been with this shot, take a look at how he trained Golden State teammate George Johnson on his free throws. Prior to taking up lessons with the once go to free throws, Johnson with his traditional style of free throw shot at just 53% for his first two years in the league. After meeting with Barry before games and during practice, his free throw percentage increased to his highest 80% using the old under the leg technique. Makes you wonder, hmm, if we'll ever see the shot come back to the league today, Wilt Chamberlain. It's practically common knowledge to all that taller players for whatever reason tend to have a difficult time on the line. Not even scorers as dominant as Wilt Chamberlain were able to break this stereotype. However, what made Chamberlain's free throw ritual interesting was the fact he remains to be one of the only players without any kind of consistency. Chamberlain tried everything to improve his abysmal free throw shot, which during his worst season was low as 38%. Trying a traditional free throw method often led to a shot too powerful, and when he tried to go underhand, well, it tended to be too light of a shot. And when he stepped back a few feet, well, at that point, it was just the luck of the draw if it had gone in. It had reached a point where Chamberlain would transition from techniques from his first shot to the second, often resulting in two misses. Chamberlain's college coach, Tex Winter, talked about an unbelievable technique only he would try in a game, saying, I actually saw this, and to this day people don't believe it, but he wasn't at the top of the circle but three steps behind it. He had run to the free throw line, take off, and dunk the ball. And the rules at the time, you could. I think I definitely may have been instrumental because I was chairman of the basketball coach rules and recommendations committee. And I explained to the coaches what I saw and said something has to be done so we don't have guys who can dunk the ball at the free throw line. Carl Malone. It's no surprise that Carl Malone, otherwise known as the mailman, tended to prefer to deliver packages below the basket. In spite of his preference, Malone still led the league and made free throws in a season for some years. And while you can chalk it up to intentional fouls, Malone still managed to make a commendable 74% of his shots. Although it should be mentioned that Malone often pushed the 10 second free throw time limit on multiple accounts. This had all been in part due to his long and strange free throw ritual, which included him dribbling the ball an unnecessary amount of times while he mouthed something to himself. Fellow teammates and opponents would often mock Malone as it was always a mystery as to what he was saying before he shot his free throw. Malone only spoke openly about it once with reporters where he admitted he had just been reminding himself on what to do when he was lined up. Bill Cartwright. As a big man role player for the Chicago Bulls in the 90s, Bill Cartwright found it hard to get people's attention while playing with the GOAT Michael Jordan. In an unassumed effort to get everyone's attention, Bill sported some of the weirdest free throw mechanics ever displayed in a professional setting. For starters, his ritual began with some dribbles as he lowered his back slightly with every bounce reaching a point where he had been about 90 degrees hunched over. He then bounced the ball a few more times as he ever so slightly raised his arch back before gripping the ball like one would grip a pumpkin. Then, out of nowhere, he'll fully extend his back straight up while his arms flail way out behind his head before shooting what looks like to be the worst traditional free throw ever seen. Amazingly, with all the talent on the Stock Bulls team, no one cared to give poor Cartwright any pointers. Taken into consideration, Cartwright's sinful free throw mechanics, the big man still managed to finish with a career high of 77%. <laughs> That's pretty good. Jason Kidd. Much like Alonzo Mourning, Jason Kidd often took the chance of shooting a free throw to pay respect to his family. His variation had included a wipe of his hands on his shorts before blowing a kiss out to his now ex-wife Jumana and kids, Trey, Jason, Maya, and Giselle. Ending his 19-season career in 2013, Kidd finished with an impressive free throw percentage of 78.5%, and while it's unfortunate his marriage never quite panned out, at least Jumana played some kind of role in that percentage, right? Jeff Hornacek. With Jeff Hornacek having played as the Utah Jazz's reserve guard in the 90s, 
Malone hadn't been alone on the team for players with strange rituals. While on the line, Jeff would rub his face three times before shooting his shot, making it seem like he had almost been allergic to free throws. It would later be discovered that the ritual had actually served as a way for Jeff to tell his kids hello while they had been watching from home. Jeff talked about first coming up with the move, saying, they were always asking me to wave at them. I couldn't really do that, so this is what I came up with. I started getting letters from all over the world and people started asking about it, and suddenly, our secret wave wasn't so secret anymore. Shooting a career percentage of 87% and in his final season finishing at a ridiculous 95%, the rub may have also been a good luck charm. Now, then was some weird things, but work for the best. If you like more videos, hit that subscribe button.